hello and welcome back to the Bookshelf Odyssey. My name is Art, and today I want to talk to you about uh, the Brontes, specifically, well, really, all of them. This year I decided to try to take each month to focus on a different classic author, to tr maybe try to read a biography about them, and then um, a work that they've, uh, you know, uh, have written, uh, specifically Victorian classics. So in February, I thought I'd focus on the Brontes. And I read a biography about Charlotte Bronte, and then I reread in Bronte's um, Tenant of Wildfell Hall. So to start with, let's talk about uh, the biography. I read um, Charlotte Bronte, uh, A Fiery Heart by Claire Harmon. Um, and as I said in a previous video, look at those beautiful deckled edges. Um, no, that's not the only reason I bought this. Yeah, it was. But uh, this... This was a really, um, a, a really interesting uh, biography. She uh, obviously focused more on Charlotte than on her sisters, to the point of almost excluding them from the story. I, I just, uh, they, 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 I mean, they were mentioned, but was definitely not the focus of the biography. Obviously, it's about Charlotte, uh, but it, it was, it was, uh, you know, it's really a, a good in-depth biography if you're wanting to read more about her and her writing journey how she became a published writer, what some of the uh, reaction was at the time, and uh, really just her lasting legacy um, in the world of literature. So I, I really don't have a lot to say about that other than I read it, it was good, and uh, that's a, a biography I would recommend. What I find so fascinating about Charlotte and, and really the Brontes is really the, is their life, their what could have been, I mean, all three died at a very young age. And uh, in fact, even their brother, uh, their older brother died at a pretty young age. And their father outlived them all, his wife, his children, everyone. And, and that had to have been, you know, devastating to him. And what I think about, you know, Anne, Charlotte, and Emily is if they had lived a long life, what could they have written? You know, I think about Emily, who wrote um, *Wuthering Heights*, a book that I really don't care for, but I can't deny its power, its descriptive um, imagery, that it is so powerful and beautifully written. Um, the characters that I, I absolutely hate, but are so well written and powerfully written, it, it's just an incredible novel, and I hate it. <laughs> don't ask me. Don't ask me why. Okay. And then, you know, Charlotte Bronte writes this amazing novel. You know, she, she writes Jane Eyre that is like one of the top 10 best Victorian classics ever written. Some would even go as far as to say, you know, one of the top 10 books ever written. Uh, and, and because of that, some of her other books, I think it overshadowed at just how brilliant they are because of this one really brilliant novel that she writes that is absolutely just fantastic. Uh, and if you haven't read Jane Eyre, please uh, go go and do that. Um, but then uh, this month, I decided to read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Um, and I, I'm gonna, I was going to read it in this copy, but um, again, in a previous video, I mentioned um, the cover really annoyed me because of how it feels. It, it just feels scratchy and awful. So I didn't end up reading that and I listened to it on audiobook instead. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that pretty copy. I might just have to break my own rule and use it for decoration. Um, but I'm glad I have it. it it's um, beautiful looking. If, if they could just do something about that scratchy cover, I'd be, I'd be happy. So The Tenant of Wildfell Hall is the... Um, the final novel that Anne Bronte wrote, uh, kind of misleading. She only wrote two, and both are brilliant. I love both of them. Um, it was published on, in 1848 uh, under the name Act, Acton Bell. Um, the Bronte sisters wrote under masculine pseudonyms, uh, as was fairly common at the time. Uh, I'm glad that we know today who the author is, and we know some about her life. Now, uh, I'm going to read a little bit about it um, from Wikipedia. I'll be careful about spoilers. This will be spoiler-free. Don't worry. 
Uh, but it says that the novel is framed as a series of letters from Gilbert Markham to his friend about the events connected with his meeting a mysterious young widow calling herself Helen Graham, who arrives at Wildfell Hall, an Elizabethan mansion which has been empty for many years with her young son, with her young son and a servant. Uh, and she's pursuing an artist career and she makes an income by selling her pictures. So because she's a very mysterious and secluded character, uh, there's gossip that comes up around her all throughout the village. And um, of course, Gilbert falls head over heels in, in love with her and wants to pursue her. But she's very hesitant to that and wants uh, and kind of wants to put the kibosh on that. Uh, now, re- what we do find out through the story is her backstory. Um, so for that, um, I'll leave you to read it. Uh, but it's it's a powerful section whenever uh, and I've read this book two or three times now, but whenever I get to so like Gilbert narrates the first half and then the second half of the book, um, Helen narrates it. And whenever I get to that section, I, I just fly through it. It's such a compelling, riveting story about all that she goes through. And by the end of the book, I'm just left breathless, to be honest. Uh, it, it's a magnificent work. Again, according to this source in Wikipedia, that uh, this book was considered to be one of the first feminist novels and that it left a um, tremendous impact reverberating throughout England. Uh, the decisions that she makes in this novel were considered to be revolutionary and violating you know, the sh- normal so- social conventions. And were rather shocking. So then I go back to, you know, reading their biography and thinking, you know, how really in some way all three sisters wrote novels like that were shocking to the norms and social conventions of the time. You know, how and why did they write like this? And um, what were their experiences that inspired them to do that? You know, that's something I am pursuing still to learn more and more about them as I read biographies and and read their their work over and over again. Um, yeah, so if you haven't read uh, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, I would really encourage you to read that. If you like reading, you know, Victorian literature, but you're tired of all the, um, you know, the really flaky and flighty, um, shallow female characters that can, can be found in those books, I'm looking at you, Dickens. <laughs> okay, then uh, this story has a powerful, complex female main character at the heart of its story. It's, it's just stunning. That's the only word I can think of is how stunning this book is. And it remains one of my top 10 favorite Victorian classics. Uh, having reread it now, I can say that with, with full assurance that, um, this book held up under a reread. And in fact, again, I enjoyed it even better. Um, and just getting caught up in Helen's story. So uh, that's really all I have uh, for today. Just a short little video about the Brontes. Um, do you like the Brontes? Have you read any of them? Um, have you at least read Jane Eyre? You know, if not, don't fret. There's always time to read a classic. So uh, let me know down below if you have a favorite Bronte novel. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. We're on our way to 700 subscribers. We're inching ever so closer to that mark. And uh, it's really exciting to see it uh, creeping up that far. So uh, thank you for those who have subscribed and until next time, happy reading everyone and take care.